knowledge is power today through this video i your one and only phd mentor is going to advise all the phd scholars and all the phd aspirant to have complete knowledge not only about your phd topic your research interest your subject but also about the ugc's phd regulations why i'll answer that question after this short video by none other than the honorable ugc's chairman have a look and then we meet again working for phd involves years of hard work to maintain the quality of phd degrees ugc has uh, phd regulations however from time to time we keep hearing complaints about uh, universities violating these phd regulations friends to make sure that every university follows the phd regulations or uh, to maintain the quality of the phds that the universities are producing these are the minimum standards that a university must follow in case any university fails to follow the phd regulations ugc will take it very seriously and uh, um, go ahead with appropriate action so friends make sure that the phd regulations are strictly followed by your university in order to maintain the quality of the phds produced by your institution all those who are not aware phd in india and in fact across the world can only be given by a degree granting institution in india phd is offered by either universities or institution of importance and both of these or any institute which is granting a phd has to follow ugc's phd regulations which go by the name of minimum standards and procedures for the award of phd degree the last of these phd regulations as we commonly call them came out in the year of 2022 in november 2022 in fact we have created a series of video to discuss these regulations when they were launched sharing the link with of all those uh, videos with you in the i above and in the description below now through this video the honorable chairman of ugc professor m Jagdesh Kumar is telling all the universities and the students that it is mandatory for all the universities and institutions to follow the minimum standards of awarding a PhD as prescribed by UGC. Recently, UGC has been receiving complaints that there are many universities who are flouting these minimum standards. They are not following it and are giving easy PhD degrees. UGC is now going to conduct random checks on universities to ensure that the PhD degrees are actually being awarded as per the minimum standards only and in case there is any university which is seen flouting these terms then this universities as well as the degrees awarded can have some strong repercussions or they can be penalized your phd degree is your responsibility at the end you are the one who's going to put in 5 to 6 years of hard work for that degree therefore i advise each one of you all the phd students and aspirants to have a complete and in depth knowledge about the ugc's phd regulation norms and guidelines being your phd mentor I am going to start this process by sharing with you in today's video all about the PhD guidelines of UGC related to the admission process. So stay tuned with your one and only PhD mentor, Dr. Ratika Gaba, and learn about the eligibility criteria, the admission process as prescribed in the minimum standards and procedures of award of phd degree of 2022 so let us start by discussing the eligibility the minimum qualification required to pursue a phd in india now as per ugc there are three category of students who can pursue a phd in india number 
those who have a two years of master's degree with at least 55% marks. Second are the four year graduate students with at least 75% marks. And third are those students who completed their one years of masters after their four years of graduation. And these students should also have at least 55% in their masters. Of course, 5% relaxation is given to various categories of students like SC, ST, non uh, creamy OBC category, then a PWD category students and so on. All the universities have to mandatorily follow these minimum standards. Remember, these are just minimum standards and if there are university wants, they can always make the rules more stringent. So there are many universities, many top ranking universities who have kept the eligibility criteria 60% rather than 55%. Also, please note that the four year graduates being allowed to pursue a PhD degree is a it was just introduced in November 2022. And therefore, you will still find many universities who have not implemented these new regulations or still do not allow the four year graduates to pursue a PhD from the university. After qualification, let us discuss, let us come to the next step, which is filling the application form. So for PhD, you would have to fill up individual application forms for whichever university you are most interested in applying to. How should you choose this university? How should you choose the best university or the most suitable university? We've covered this topic in length in our last video, sharing the link of the same in the I above. So remember, when you're filling up the application form, Along with the application form, there will be many top ranking universities, central universities and even institution of national repute who will want you to submit either a research proposal, a statement of purpose or details about your research interest. So along with your degrees and your mark sheets, keep these documents also ready with you in advance. Remember the three tips for PhD aspirants that I had shared with you. If you haven't watched that video, then sharing the link of the same in the I above. Okay, now uh, from here, once you've filled up the application form and you get shortlisted, then the university is going to call you or the institution is going to call you for an entrance examination. This entrance, entrance examination is also a compulsory requirement by UGC. Now UGC says that all universities will have to take an entrance examination and no student irrespective of their years of experience or no matter which qualifications they have, they cannot directly move to the last and the final step of VIVA without giving an entrance examination. However, there is one category of students who are exempted from giving any kind of entrance examination, those which have qualified some kind of eligibility examination. Which brings us to our step number four, eligibility qualification or the eligibility exam qualification. So eligibility exams, when we talk about the first and probably the most taken examination, which comes to our mind is UGC net. Apart from UGC net, you can also give CSIR net or gate or any other similar eligibility examination for a PhD. Now, if in case you already have qualified for one of these eligibility examination, then of course UGC says that you are exempted from the entrance examination. Here, I would like to bring to your notice two exemptions. Firstly, there are certain universities who do not take any entrance examination because they allow only students who qualified some kind of eligibility examination to apply. So they have made this as their minimum eligibility for applying for a PhD. Also, there are certain universities who only take up students who've qualified GRF or the fellowship examination of UGC. Okay, from here we move on to the last step towards the PhD admission process. So there are places where you might not have required an entrance examination. There are places where you might not require an eligibility examination. However, whether you've reached 
the uh, through an eligibility exam or an entrance exam you will definitely have to face the last and the final step of the phd admission process which is the phd viva again a mandatory requirement as per the ugc's minimum standards uh, phd regulation every student irrespective of their years of experience qualification even if you are net grf qualified or you've got any kind of fellowship or you come from any big university you might be a gold medalist or anything but without a phd viva in india you cannot get phd admission so these are the five steps to the phd admission process in india i hope you did find the video informative if you have any other questions related to this topic do tell us in the comment section below don't forget to like our video and share them with your other phd scholars and aspirants this is dr ritika gaba thank you so much for watching my video have a great week ahead